Hello and welcome to another video. We're coming live today from my stock room. I'm in the studio and I should be doing work, but instead I'm skiving and making this video. I put a shout out this week on my Instagram feed for people to ask me some questions that I can answer. So that's what we're going to be getting on with today. <music> I've had loads of people asking me questions this week and I'm not going to be able to get through them all I don't think in the time frame because I do have a tendency to witter on but we will try and get through as many as we can. First question comes from Keek Slimming Wheel 4 who's asked me what my best low sin or sin free snacks are. Now for me I find the best thing I go to is if I'm looking for low sin or no sin is when I go for fruit. Now I know it's a bit of a cliche but I do try and fill up on things like bananas and things like that. I also um We'll try and mix it up a little bit. I'll go with a bit of yogurt, pour it on the top, something like that. Or if I'm looking for something really low sin, I'll go with the half sin choc shot, pour it over some fruit and yogurt. You've got a bit of a dessert on the go there. Most of the things that I tend to go for, usually they involve chocolate, I'll be honest with you. So I tend to go for the low sin rather than the no sin. Fuck's sake, man, this is difficult. Ah. Cookie Fat Crack Slimming Wheel said that she's maintained for four weeks but she's managed to stay on plan help i think sometimes we we look to the scales for for the answers and they're just not there at least you're not putting on weight and i know that sounds stupid but the worst thing is when we stuck to the plan and we know that we're doing good and we step on those scales and we've had a gain at least you're maintaining now it could be that you've upped your exercise and you're building body weight and and but it's you're losing your fat and you're gaining your muscle so it could be that what i tend to advise people to do is don't just look at the scales don't let the numbers on those scales dictate how you're going to feel whether it's a good number or a bad number don't let it build you up don't let it knock you down do other things. Take measurements. See how much your waist is going down. See how much your thighs are going down. See how much your arms are going down. When I started on the plan, I used to take my measurements every single week. I would weigh on a Tuesday and I would measure on a Tuesday. My neck, my waist, my hips, my arms, my thighs and my calves. I would make sure that everything was measured. So I knew, even if I went into that uh, group and I didn't have the best loss on the scales, I could see that I'd lost half an inch off my arms or an inch off my waist. Don't just look for the scales to tell you that you've done a good job. Only you know the effort that you've put on in it every week and those scales are not gonna tell you that you've done a great job. They're just gonna tell you whether or not you've lost weight. Don't be disheartened just because you're maintaining because that doesn't mean that your body isn't changing and it doesn't mean that you're not looking better than you were the week before or the week before that. How do you say no to good food when people offer it to you? I think I don't always and that's the truth. It'll depend on the mood I'm in, it'll depend how well I'm doing, if I feel like I can justify having something that maybe isn't strictly on plan or within my sin allowance. What I tend to do is try and balance it up. If I'm not having a great week following the plan, I think sometimes the best thing I can do is just say no. And I know that's easier said than done because then something is put in front of you or you're going into a shop or a supermarket, temptation is everywhere. And that's not always easy to overcome. But what I find is, I think, I think back to how I used to look, I think back to how I used to feel and I think, is it really worth it? Is that bar of chocolate? Is that bag of chips? Is it really going to be worth the feeling that I'll have when I get on those scales and I see that actually I haven't done myself for that week? Likewise, if I'm having a good week, if I feel like I can get some allowance in there and I can manoeuvre my sins a little bit, then I'll go for it. It's really about finding that balance because life doesn't stop. Just because we're doing diets or Slimming World or Weight Watchers or whatever it is that you're doing to try and bring that weight down, life doesn't stop. There's still going to be birthdays, there's still going to be weddings, there's still going to be funerals and parties and everything like that what you need to do is make sure that you're still living because it's going to be no fun losing all that weight and locking yourself indoors every week every day whatever just because you were scared to eat something that isn't on plan I know a lot of people might say that that's not the best advice, but the fact is that it's true. Most of the reasons that we are losing the weight is because we want to be more social, we want to be more active, and we want to get back out amongst it all. I know that's certainly a big thing for me. So I always will try and balance it. So if I'm having a night out, I might have a couple of drinks too many, but I know that I need to rein it back in. Don't be put off if somebody's offering you treats. But likewise, don't feel like you have to take them. And sometimes all you need to do is explain to people that actually... I prefer if he didn't didn't offer it to me because I am trying to lose weight because some people I, and I know it's not very nice but some people do think it's funny oh she's on a diet I'll offer her a donut and they're doing it in a playful way and they don't mean any harm by it but they don't realize that psychologically that can be an absolute nightmare for us 
I'm new to Slimming World this week. What's your advice? Um, the best thing I can advise you is to stick to that plan. Now, I know that probably sounds like the, the easiest bit of advice to give, but it's so true. I found that when I first started Slimming World, I thought, I'm not going to get on with this for two reasons. One, I don't like feeling restricted. And two, they were telling me to go away and eat potatoes and pasta and bread and all the things that I'd ingrained in myself that I shouldn't be eating. But it works. It absolutely works. So follow that plan to the T. It's not restrictive. It's only as restrictive as you make it. And a lot of diets will go out there and you're not allowed to have full meals or you're not allowed to eat certain things. On Slimming World, you can eat anything. And I think it's the reason that I've taken to it so well. Because I'm a big eater. I've always been a big eater. So the fact that I can fill my plate and I can still have things like pasta, which I love, it just means that I can enjoy my food still, but still be losing weight. A little bit of a bit there. So don't be afraid to just follow that plan to the T. When you go in and you've got your new members talking, your consultants is sitting down with you and telling you all the foods that you can and can't have and the allowances and things like that, just listen, take it all in and keep reading your book. Go back to it. They'll give you that book in your first session. Keep reading it, keep looking through it, keep making sure that you know the ins and outs of it, but also take that forward with you. I know that I've become a little bit complacent over time because I've been doing it for 18 months now and I know that I will ignore the book because I think that I know it all and I don't know it all. And sometimes a good refresher is all you really need to get back into the swing of it. Just get in there head on. I thought when I first started Slimmer Wheel, this is never going to work for me. I went home from that first session determined that I was going to go in the following week to prove them all wrong with my big game because I was going to eat all the pasta and potatoes that I liked. And I went in and I lost half a stone in a week. And I filled up on things like pasta and potatoes. Just make sure that you're filling up on all the salads and the speed foods as well. It really is a cracking plan and it's one that anybody can adapt to. So don't be afraid of it. My advice is just follow it to the T and you will really get on with it because it's not restrictive at all. What is your go-to meal when you really can't be asked but you don't want to go off plan? I think for me it's probably something really simple like bean pasta. Now I know it sounds bland, it sounds boring, but it takes 10 minutes and it's done. So tin of beans, I usually judge it up a little bit with some spices, garlic, curry powder, whatever, and some pasta. I'll throw it all in a pot together and I'll have that. Um, egg on toast is another good one. Um, full English breakfast. Who can say no to a full English breakfast? And you can have that sin free or for, you know, a li as little as two or three sins. There are plenty of foods out there that I go to, but pasta is the one that I will always rely on because it's not only quick, but I don't have to stand there watching the pan and go and play on the PlayStation instead. On the days where you find yourself feeling low, what or who keeps you on plan? This is actually a really easy one. Now, a lot of people, a lot of consultants, a lot of people who've done a weight loss journey, a lot of people who've already lost their weight and got to their target will say to you, keep looking forward, keep aiming high, keep going for that goal. And that's brilliant. And I do always look forward and I keep looking at that goal. I've got a holiday coming up and I really want to hit my target for it. But the thing that really spurs me on, the thing that really keeps me going isn't looking forward, isn't looking forward to that body that I'm going to grow into. It's looking back at the one that I've been running away from. I always look back at photos where I was at my heaviest. I think back to being stuck in my house, knowing that all my friends were on a night out and I was feeling too embarrassed to go because I was too big to dance or too big to join in or I was this or I was that. And how low I felt and how my confidence had just completely escaped me. I'd always been a very confident, very outgoing, very funny guy. And then I put on all this weight and I shied away. I hid away. And that was horrible. It was like I closed down for four years. And I don't have any good memories from it. And that's not what I'm willing to be anymore. That's not what I'm willing to do anymore. So I always look backwards. I don't just look forward. I look back. I look at pictures. I remember times where I felt too shy or too embarrassed to join in. And I think about how horrible that felt. And I just won't let myself go back there. I have gains. I go in sometimes and I've been on holiday and I... I've had a little gain or I've indulged on the weekend and I've had a little gain. But I always make sure that that weight comes back off. I don't let it stick on and I won't let it stick on. Always, always look back as well as looking forward. That's the best advice I can give. Doily Slimming World wants to know, what was the final straw that made me want to lose weight and join Slimming World? That's a really easy one, actually. It's a really easy one. I knew that over the past three or four years, I'd started really gaining weight. I'd never been big, never been that big, um, but I was 
ignorant to it. I knew that I was putting on a little bit of weight, but I kept telling myself, it's not so bad, I'm not that big, it doesn't matter, I can carry it off, blah, 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 all the excuses. And then in 2015, I threw a charity ball to raise money for people who were suffering from cancer. And doing that ball, I had to go out and obviously as the host, get myself a text, get suited up, look really good. Um, and when I went for the fitting for my tuxedo, I got so down about not being able to just pull things off the shelf and try them on. I had to be measured, I had to order things in, and it really got me down. And in the end, I went to that ball wearing a black shirt and black trousers and a black tie and black shoes, and I just wore black. And I wanted to hide away. There was no text, there was no suit. I just, I just wanted to hide away and be as black and bland as I possibly could. So when the lights went off in the ball, nobody would know who I was or where I was. That made me really miserable. It made me really sad that I'd, I'd put in months worth of effort and I'd thrown this big event. I mean, there were press there, we'd sold hundreds of tickets, we had, it was a huge event. And I just wanted to shy away and I couldn't feel myself enjoying it. Probably about two or three months later, somebody showed me some pictures from the ball and I managed to be caught in one or two of them. I was huge. I didn't realize just how big I'd got. And, so, it's sort of hard to actually talk about it. it. It was a really horrible time. It was a horrible realization. And I think we all have that as well, especially with photos. In, in these days when everyone's taking photos on their phone and they're uploading them to Facebook and we see them and we're mortified. And somebody showed me this photo of me and it, it upset me. It upset me a lot. And I was talking with a friend of mine and she said, well, why don't we go to Slimming World? Because she'd been previously and I never had. To be honest, I was a little bit apprehensive I didn't really want to go I thought it was something for women and something where even though everybody as stupid as it sounds is in the exact same boat as I am I thought I'd walk in and everyone would be like oh my god look how fat he is what's he doing here like I was going to be the odd one out and I was talking myself out of it talking myself out of it I really didn't want to do it but something had to give and I thought well if I don't try I'm going to keep telling myself I'll start next week without ever starting so I went along with my friend to a session and I haven't really looked back I managed to lose just under seven stones so far there's been huge differences and it really has changed my life and I'm not paid by Slimmer World I'm not promoting Slimmer World but I can only say the truth and the truth is that I couldn't have got to where I am today without Slimming World, I just wouldn't have got up and done it. And it really has changed everything for me. Okay, so that's it. I can't get to everyone's questions, I'm sorry. So if I have missed yours out, I do apologize. But you can always ask me some more for the next AMA, either in the comments here, on Instagram or on Twitter. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Mm -hmm.